going to do a video today on my rifle setup. Now, so I know somebody's going to say, no, that's a carbine. That's a rifle. You're right. But for simplicity's sake, this is the device I'm talking about today. We're going to do this carbine, this rifle setup today. So starting from the front, working towards the back, we've got a Surefire uh, Scout Light mounted. And it's mounted on an Arasaka cantilevered mount here. And this allows you to push this light forward uh, so that if you run a suppressor on here, you're not going to get a lot of light splashing off of this and illuminating this thing or a lot of shadow um, if you turn the light on where the suppressor is you know, blocking part of your light throw. As, so this allows you to prevent that as opposed to having it mounted way back here. So the light would be starting its shot from there and then you got a can and you get shadow. So anyway, there's that. Next, we've got uh, dagger defense. These are offset 45 degrees mounted to the top rail, but they're offset irons. And they operate off a spring, push button, pops up. Get the same normal adjustments on, you know, for any other, uh, and there's your elevation adjustment on the front and rolling back here to the rear. This one's mounted just as far back, as close as I can get to my uh, EOTech. Uh, so I'm not taking up any more rail real estate than necessary. But again, press the button, boom, it pops up. So that's that's how that that works. And you can see I'm running the uh, larger aperture. Uh, if you're shooting up close, you want the larger aperture. You can see more. If you're going to be doing some distance shooting, flip that sucker back and run the uh, the tighter, smaller uh, hole there. So there's that. And it's got the old knob for you know, your windage adjustments. Uh, so anyway, these are just on here in the event that something were to fail. I know people say they don't do this because it just, they don't fail anymore, but I mean, it's electronic, it can. This can get broken, you know, it is possible. Okay, back to the front of the gun. Uh, down here, this is a grip stop by True North Concepts. And this just allows you to come in, get a good purchase on it, and your hand is in the same position every time. I wrapped it with um, self-adhesive self bandage. Again, it's kind of a touch point, too, so you quickly know that you know, you've got hard metal back here. Now you don't. It's also kind of a heat shield of sorts. Behind this, this is a uh, kind of a neat piece of gear. It's very slim. It's made by Arcane. It's a QD mount for your sling, for one. And on the other side, this is just a band retention hole, right? So you can run retention bands. And these bands are also made by Arcane. They're called Arc Bands. And I use that for sling retention, just to keep the sling there when it's stowed. The sling itself, uh, you might you know, notice the, the logo there. It's a Feral Concept Slingster. And it's just a really good all-around sling. They make two different types. One is the... Uh, the naked slingster and then you have this one which is the padded version the naked slingster is going to come with just this band running all the way through whereas the padded version uh, actually has pads this will tear your neck up so if you're going to buy a sling from pharaoh i would re recommend highly you get the padded version of that so that's the light that's the backup uh, irons they're out of the way and then we we worked our way back to the uh, QD mount and the arcane um, uh, the arcane sling piece here so now we get to the EOTech this is the XPS3 it's just got a single uh, good solid working uh, holographic site I've used EOTechs for uh, 20 years they're fantastic you know, they're just a little tank of a, a tank of a site, and they're fast. You've got like a big screen TV back here, practically. Um, this is the uh, the one with the night vision mode. It really is not night vision. All it really does when you press that button is it takes the the dot that's in here, and it reduces it to the point where you almost can't see it with the naked eye. But if you're looking through night vision, you can pick it up uh, easily. So then you've got. Your uh, down and right adjustments here for sighting that thing in. 
and uh, it's mounted on a Unity Tactical Riser. Uh, this gives you enough height over bore so that if you are shooting night vision, you're, you're not having to bury your head to do any sort of passive aiming. All right, what's passive aiming? Normally, up here, I have a Wilcox RAID XE that fires a laser. That's active aiming. You're actively firing something downrange that can be picked up by somebody else wearing night vision. Passive aiming would be coming out of here. That would, no laser turned on, this thing only, and you're looking through this, picking up the dot that's projected in this housing, and it's passive in, in terms of it's not shooting anything downrange in terms of a light or energy downrange to be picked up. So that's passive aiming. So if you're doing that, you got this riser that allows you to look straight through here and out. And that brings us back to the stock. And this is the riser made by a, uh, a buddy here in Tidewater. And his name's Slade. You might have heard his name before. Good, good fella, former dev group guy. The stock itself is a Magpul CTR. You know, it's just a very good, solid uh, piece of gear there. Uh, uh, it's got a QD mount in the back. You got adjustments, press it, lock it in, and it's, it's not going anywhere once you get it fixed and situated. Uh, I, I take my sling and I run it around the back side of the stock. Uh, that way, if you're, because I'm a right-handed guy, so my body is going to be on this side of the rifle. And if I switch to my other shoulder, this allows for the sling to move with me without choking me out. Back here is the Law Tactical Folder. And you press that button and everything folds to the side. This stock swings around to the other side. You can't fire it from a uh, folded position, but it does assist with uh, storing, carrying it, transporting it, whatever else. Uh, down here we have a Radian uh, 45 degree throw safety. Why 45 degrees? On a standard AR or M4, whatever platform similar to this, when you go from safe to fire, you have to bring your thumb all the way down. This thing is going to be going this way, 90 degrees. When you go to take it off and put it back on uh, safe, you almost have to break your grip to get your thumb here so you can crack this thing around and, and get it set again. Uh, I don't like doing that. So this is ambidextrous. I've got them on both sides. And it's just quick on, quick off, quick on, quick off. And uh, yep, for safety folks, which should be all of us, this is a clear and safe gun. So that brings us actually to the dust cover. You see I got 556 kind of scrawled on there like a kindergartner, but I wrote that on there because I do not want to pick up um, some other or loan the gun to somebody and have them jam 300 blackout in there and hurt themselves. Uh, so I, yeah, you can buy laser engraved dust covers, but why? I mean, this is a work gun, you know, it's not, it's not going to go in a showroom. So there's that. Down below, we've got an HRF Magwell flared uh, Magwell. And this thing, you can see the seam here, it just clamps together. And there's a bolt on this side, there's a bolt on the other side, squeezes this on, locks it on there, perfect fit. And it allows for faster mag changes. The trigger that you're looking at there is a Geissele, and it is the SDSSP. It's a single stage, SSP stands for single stage precision. Um, it's a fantastic trigger, love it, and I love the flat face of this thing. Uh, the poundage on it is ridiculous in terms of you know what you're what you're able to uh, pull. Uh, it's great, I love it. So that takes us down to the grip. Gunfighter three uh, grip. It's got a nice angle to it and got a good high back strap, so you can get the same grip that you would have for your pistol and emulate that into your, your rifle so everything is tracking and it's the same. Just a fantastic, um, fantastic grip angle and grip in general. Okay, so backing out to the whole thing, the upper receiver is Bushmaster upper and there's a Bushmaster lower. You probably were able to 
pick up on the Bushmaster logo there. Bushmaster, I've used Bushmaster uh, for, again, probably 20 years. Uh, G-Watt time, Bushmaster is what I used. And it's what the, the uh, place that I used to work issued. And it's just a really good, solid rifle. I, they had problems a couple years ago, and then they were uh, picked up by Franklin Armory, and uh, their production is in good shape, and their, uh, their rifles are fantastic. Uh, the slimline M lock here, you can get your whole hand around this thing and really control that gun. I do not like a fat, uh, fat forend, I like a good slim tight forend. You can see how that thing just uh, floats the rail, uh, floats over the barrel there. It's just a sweet piece. Overall, just fantastic, fantastic maker, fantastic rifle. Uh, so that's, uh, I guess that's about it. Um, the only other thing I can think is this, I, I don't even, it's charging handle. I don't know where it came from. Um, I've had it for a long time. Love it. It's, uh, it's got this wing that kind of sticks out. So, you know, if you're operating at speed and you need to hit this thing, you know, with your coming in with your, uh, non-firing hand, you need to run your charging handle back. You just come up and catch this and pull it back if you can't get your hand on it or get up here real good and grab it. You've got good purchase on it. You can't, you can't miss it. Good. Good charging handle, uh, nothing special there. You know, guys, you look at this gun, you're like, hey man, that thing is beat to pieces. And it is, it's a work gun. 